Hello and welcome. I'm Seth Payne, former NFL defensive lineman, played 10 years in the league. Now I do a morning radio show on Sports Radio 610 in Houston. And I know we're usually very, very heavy on Texans content, except I cannot, I cannot ignore this Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless divorce any longer. As a child of divorce myself, I recognize the telltale signs of dysfunction amongst these, these two wayward souls. Um, pure of spirit, as I know so many of you believe that Skip Bayless is. It's a, it's a shame to see kids torn apart like this. But uh, look, obviously there's an element of like invited dysfunction on debate shows like that. It's not like anybody really wants a resolution of conflicts or issues or anything, but things went too far too fast with these guys. And uh, I just, I'm, I'm fascinated by how this six year successful union went down in flames like it did. I think most people, just like Chris Broussard and Rob Parker on their podcast, The Odd Couple, discussed, uh, I think most people think like the real turning point where everything just went beyond the point of no return was when Skip Bayless uh, basically accused Shannon Sharp of just having some kind of personal vendetta uh, or jealousy over Tom Brady. Here's those two discussing it. And then I want to play the clip of that particular moment because I do think I do think some people are unfairly criticizing Shannon Sharp for something that he didn't actually do. And uh, and then we're going to look at it through the eyes of a marriage counselor and go through 12 things that people do wrong in arguments and even on a debate show like this, this is where I think these two just, they, they pushed too far. They flew too close to the sun. You, you get, there's certain places you don't go in debate, even if it's uh, like in, invited, bad, awful, poor faith debate on cable television. Here's Chris Broussard and Rob Parker discussing where they thought it all went wrong. Because I saw it. Yeah. And the moment, yeah. the moment that Skip said to Shannon, that he was jealous of Tom Brady. He was criticizing Tom Brady's play. And Skip basically said that, uh, like, the criticism wasn't valid and the only reason you're criticizing Tom Brady is because you're jealous of him. I, I, at that moment, Chris, I, I said, that the, 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 those two just got separated. Like, I did. Like, <laughs> no, at it, that it, moment. It, you remember, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Am I right? That was no, a I, moment. It, yeah, I, I totally. And... and during that show, if you remember, Shannon took off his glasses. Yep, and Skip said, "Don't take Skip your said, glasses Don't off. take or put your glasses. Put your back glasses on. back on." That's what he said. And um, yeah, a lot of people didn't like that, and 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 Shannon put them on. Um, I don't think he should have. That part there, like the last part about the putting on and off of the glasses, I think uh, I think Skip actually handled that perfectly. There's some. Like rules of pleasant debate, and uh, as many of you know, and given the title of this thumbnail, uh, I think the title I put on here was From Undisputed to Unbearable. I was once accused 19 times in three minutes of being unbearable by my co-host, my, who I love, Mike Meltzer, and, uh, and, and it was true. I was unbearable in some regards because I, I think like like Skip Bayless or like Shannon Sharp in some of these clips that we're going to see, uh, sometimes you just go too far. Sometimes you're a real son of a bitch. As far as Skip Bayless criticizing the uh, Shannon Sharp, I, it, it was, we'll see. It, it goes even beyond the insult of like what Adam is saying here. Um, when you think of some of the dynamics of athletes in the media, because it's uh, this is some huge hypocrisy coming up by Skip Bayless. Okay, uh, and also I'm going to refer to this after we watch this initial clip. These are like the 12 things that couples do when they argue unfairly. Name calling, interrupting your partner, using disrespectful body language, attacking your partner's character, shutting down, avoiding eye contact, using exaggerated language, bringing up past stuff, yelling, swearing, or aggressive language, uh, the FCC regulates some of that, but I think Skip Bayless goes too far on one thing. Uh, arguing about too many things at once, my God, I know all about that. And uh, continuing to fight without a resolution, that's kind of the format of their show. But here's the, here's the debate. Here's where everything went really, really sour. But you're giving him 100% of the blame? That you had that and this was, okay, so at this point, Skip Bayless is 
100% still in Tom Brady's favor last year. And uh, Shannon Sharp had been criticizing Tom Brady's play all year. But this is where it all came to a head after Tom Brady and the Bucks fell to 6-7 and seven after uh, big games from Purdy and McCaffrey. Well, that, that's just, you, you have no objectivity. It's just straight Brady still, hate. Still. Wait, wait a minute. This is just straight hate by a guy who's jealous that he is still playing at a high level at 45 when you had to stop at 35. Still, that's what you that's do. That's the point. That's what you do. Every time somebody, every time I call something into question, I'm jealous. No. Still, I did well, what I did. I never said you were jealous of Baker Mayfield. Still, I did what I did. You make it seem like I was a bum. I'm in the effing Hall of Fame. Okay, I so got three what? Super Bowls. So what? So what? He's way better than you were. I'm be- oh. Oh, that's a big thing. Like that, that's where you took it completely outside the realm of whatever the argument is and made it like that's attacking that's attacking somebody's character. I would if I if I refer to the list of the like right there, we just saw um interrupting your partner. This is uh things that married couples do when they argue that they shouldn't be. Uh using disrespectful body language. They do that at like almost every single exchange. Attacking your partner's character in this context, I would say that accusing accusing Shannon Sharp of only having this argument because he's jealous of Tom Brady aside from it being wrong because it's not like it's not like Shannon Sharp is afraid to criticize other great athletes or anything um aside from it being wrong it's just it's an ad hominem it's, it's a personal attack uh instead of attacking the actual argument and uh and then we'll get into some more my god you, see what you do? You take personal shots. No, you, for I, don't, the, I don't take yeah. personal shots. Time you time started time it. Time out. You would take a personal shot at me. I so, didn't take oh, a personal shot at you. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal shot. Put your glasses back on. Oh, I did. Oh, shit. Nah, at that it, moment. Excuse my language. All right, I'll and, get back and, to it. I got excited. The put your glasses back on moment. Now, here we go. So, oh, boy. He takes the glasses off. Time out. You, so... Taking the glasses off. I, I want you guys to weigh in for on me, well, for me. Like the taking the glasses off. Like it's almost like Skip acts like this is some kind of an aggressive act or something, or like a prelude to, or or somehow disrespectful. That's what what confused me. But I want you to pay attention to how much time elapses before Shannon puts the glasses back on, and and what happens in the interim. You would take a personal shot at me. I so didn't take a you? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal... Put your f- glasses back on. Can I finish? You're willing to take a personal shot at me to say this man is better than me because I say he's playing bad this year? Well, because you you, you just... Go ahead. You disrespect him. It, it's just so... It, so it's you would just... You know what? It's beneath your You would dignity. disrespect me to no, support him. No. Well, I'll, I'll support him over anybody because he's the greatest player who ever have played your it. game, and it's by have far. Have at it. Have at it. Okay? Take off, I'm going to have at it because I'm going to have at you because what happened yesterday? The Bucks' defense was horrendous yesterday. Dude, I, 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 look, I've, I've been there before man when you get heated like that and like skip went way too far with that went way too far because it's true like the like shannon sharp is a freaking hall of famer like i don't think it's in bounds to criticize dan orlovsky if you're like if you're somebody on twitter go for it but like if you're if you're in a debate with dan orlovsky career backup quarterback and went so far as to say that he only had an opinion because he was a backup he was jealous of somebody that's bad enough like it's it's just nonsense because it's the broadcaster equivalent of when an athlete says, "Well, you don't know because you didn't play the game." So if you know, like if I'm if I'm having an argument with somebody who's not a former professional athlete, and I say, "Well, you don't know because you didn't play the game." Well, all right, then th- th- is that a trump card for every single argument? I'm getting paid. I get paid to describe what it was like to play the game. And then use words to explain, you know, why my perspective or from my experience, why I believe something to be so. But it's not like a get out of jail free card. Likewise, for Skip Bayless to say, well, you can't possibly be correct about this because you're just jealous of Tom Brady. It's just it's just nonsense. So like all of a sudden now is is this Hall of Famer, Shannon Sharp, not supposed to participate in arguments about Jordan versus LeBron because those two were better at their respective sports than Shannon, who was a Hall of Famer. It's just, it's absurd. Like, I, and I, w- I would take it personally because that would mean that basically I can't talk about any of these guys at all. I can't weigh in on them. I can't weigh in on the broadcasters because I, w- I didn't go to journalism school or what have you. 
unlike Skip Bayless, I could never make like vague sexual accusations about professional athletes while I'm a writer, uh, like baseless nonsense. Now, see, now I'm getting upset with uh, with Skip Bayless. For Shannon, it was everything athletes hate about these no talent media types coming from his colleague and friend. Uh, yeah, the the friend part too. So what happened? They win the toss and they. Oh, and then he said, and then they defer. He acted like uh, somehow Tampa deferring after winning the toss was the, oh, did they do that in overtime? I can't remember. It was an overtime. Uh, no, no, you don't defer in overtime. No, defer in overtime. Yeah, so it was, uh, that's, that's standard to defer. So I don't even know what his point was there. Um, as far as, I, I, I found this, this is a cut up of everything leading up to all of this, which and like, frankly, including a loss that Brady had to the Rams earlier in the season, uh, that like it was it was boiling out of control. I hadn't been watching these guys a lot, but this is this is kind of crazy to live like this on a day in day out basis. They're having to use the backup tight end as their slot receiver in Cameron Bright, and you're telling me Brady got outplayed. He did. Baloney! He did. He it's the biggest bunch of baloney you've ever spewed. Man. That's the abusive language right there. That was the, uh, let's see, using exaggerated language. That's the biggest bunch of a baloney you've ever spewed. Um, let's see, swearing and using aggressive language. I'm going to say baloney is aggressive language in this context and with the ferocity that he said it. Matthew Stafford, guess what Matthew Stafford had in the second yeah. half? It's my turn. Stop it. It is my turn because Matthew Stafford. Oh, that. All right, I feel like that was a little disrespectful by that was disrespectful body language by Shannon Sharp. Um, no name calling yet. I do get, we get some bringing up of past issues soon. Yelling, that's constant. It's really funny. Yes, Matthew you still Stepp, lost. Him. He lost. You know what? I think it's my turn. It's, you, you know, I let it. you spew all your baloney. No, start no, the show. I didn't say a freaking no, word. It's, it's no, no, Skip, he okay, lost. here we go. It is my turn. He still lost. <sighs> Take the rest of the show. Okay. He's still lost. So Tyler Johnson cannot go in the second half. And Matt got behind watching the commander, uh, uh, New York Giants. And it did what it needed to do. Uh, now those two drives and you were still behind. Uh, and yeah, come on, Skip. Don't do that now. You're being real petty, bro. Let me talk. Uh, Let I me haven't talk. said a word. I know you're doing them. Come on. That's childish. See, that's another one where like, I think, again, there's a certain amount of accepted and dysfunction that's supposed to be these debate shows are two people arguing and yelling at each other and getting worked up and everything. But like you can see there's various times over the course of the, the last several months where or the, the months leading up to that incident where Shannon basically says, hey, that's out of bounds. Hey, what are you doing here? Like, this is too much. And uh, I feel like Skip, I think I think Skip thought that it was all in good fun and it was like him and his old buddy Stephen A but like Shannon was seriously taking it seriously you can't go that is very childish let your, me talk your to you your opinion is childish go ahead go go ahead no it's not no 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 I'm not going to go can you doing yeah. this uh uh I'm trying to talk to you uh go ahead go ahead seriously yep Okay, I'll take it. It is my turn now. And here's what really happened last night. My quarterback, the backup quarterback, to you Just even. called the intern and the jag and the, the uh, undrafted fraud waiting to be expo exposed, the October pumpkin. The tape says he's dead last in QBR, 17.8. We're talking about yesterday. Uh, uh, How did he look yesterday? No, he gets no, an no, F? No, no, Let me, I got the floor. Uh -huh. Because all you do is bring up those 11 games. All you do is go back to talk about when he was a rookie and won seven games. Mm. I won't talk about what I want to talk about because I got the floor. Mm. Baker Mayfield is dead last in 2022 in QBR. Blah, blah, He's blah. He's dead last. I don't blah, care. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Well, this was about, okay. I thought, man, this is actually, they're, they're getting this heated over Baker Mayfield. That's when you know, this is like arguing about like somebody bought Maxwell House instead of Dunkin' Donuts coffee or something. Blah. He's 57.8. He's 30 30 blah, completion blah, percentage. Blah. You gonna let me talk? Because that's what you do. If you'll stay on point on question. You'll never stay on point. Okay. I'm I about to stay on point. You know, you're not gonna yep. get on point until yep. I'm done talking. Okay, all right. Let's see again, like this is with Skip Bayless with making like uh, a global a global assessment. Um, let's see. Bringing up past issues, that's a little bit like this. Just uh, like you never do this. You never stay on point. You never uh, let me finish uh, arguing about too many things at once. I don't think they've done that yet. They've stayed on point. Um, but I think it's like it's pretty clear 
is I am somebody who took psychology 101 and have read several pop psychology books. Uh, as an amateur, unqualified marriage counselor, I would say that there were cries for help repeatedly by Shannon Sharp that go completely unheeded by Skip Bayless when he could have relented and relaxed and, and backed off. That's right. Spew all your hate. I, I'm going to spew it your all. Your baker hate. Spew it. 17.8, because all you talk about, you're uncertain about Justin Herbert, but you get on the floor for this clown. He's a bum. He's trash, and you know it. And every time you bring it... This is where... Anna, okay, so... As a, this, this, and I've been here before too. Don't get me wrong. I like I know my my I make my living criticizing athletes, but there is a part where sometimes I felt like Shannon Sharp was just way too quick to label people bums um, or do things like this. And I know I'm guessing like a lot of times you do it in the heat of the moment, and then you feel bad about it afterwards. And I wonder if part of Shannon Sharp like growing tired of the profession was that after six years you get a certain amount of notoriety and it's probably all real cool um, for a while. But then he starts doing his podcast, which is a lot, you know, more laid back. He can have conversations with people and I, he's pretty active on social media. And so I, I think he reads his mentions, unlike like Skip Bayless and some of those guys are smart as hell about not reading their mentions. So they don't see all of the flack that comes along with the, the, like, having these opinions and i wonder if it just started to wear on shannon he started to just realize like well, okay this is this is a bit of a it's like a, it's a bit of a clown show like it's uh it's performative you know and he just wasn't having him up i'm mm. gonna let the world know exactly what he oh, is you he's a four heard. twitter followers don't worry about hold on yeah, okay you talk about twitter and yeah. we come out here and discuss topics that you okay. tweeted okay. so don't give me about that twitter stuff mm. you can talk about my followers all you want but yeah. i got to oh, the end oh, oh. yeah i missed that because i was reading bubba's uh okay let me get it back here i didn't realize he took a shot at his <laughs> see bubba i think you make a good point you said it's like getting angry at the clown in the circus for throwing a bucket of glitter on the crowd they get paid to sports scream. Skip is out of line. It's his job description. But that's where I think, though, it's like the mafia. I told this to Sean this morning. It's like the mafia. Like, there are no rules except there's rules. Like, you govern. There are rules governing how you act in this otherwise uh, ethicless uh, scheme or uh, like, uh, arena, you know? And I think that's where, like, when... Like when you're having an argument or a debate about something, there's a point where all of a sudden, instead of arguing about the actual topics, you're arguing about like the definitions of the words you're using, or you're arguing about what what he said three months ago versus something now, and bringing in things from outside. Where I think it just um, you end up like uh, you end up like the mafia with no structure or anything. That's where Shannon thought he was, and uh, and Skip Bayless is like the complete completes. Skip Bayless is a problem. Uh, to take the analogy a little bit further, as a mob boss, Skip Bayless would be the complete and total sociopath, whereas like Shannon Sharp would still be trying to operate with some semblance of morality, even though they're, they're doing all this shady sanitation work. But um, that's where the, they're, they're on two separate pages. Yeah, okay. You talk about Twitter, and yeah. we come out here and discuss topics that you okay. tweeted. Okay. So don't give me about that Twitter stuff. Mm. You can talk about my followers all you want, yeah. but I got to okay. the end right, and you see how I do America? He's talking about my Twitter followers. Mm. That's what I know okay. I got it, all and right. I'm going to continue to go. Right. He's 187. Tell me when it's my it's turn. It's not your turn. Oh, okay. He's still football fo focus blah, got it graded. Blah, blah, blah. 37%. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, go ahead. Blah, blah, blah. You I'm, done? Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Oh, fine. Okay, you guys, I don't, I don't watch these guys regularly. Was it this bad? It wasn't this bad, like the first five years, right? I mean, this was a, like I don't remember. I remember it getting heated, but not like this. And then I remember watching. Um, I remember watching after all of these blowups, and it was like Skip was completely cowed. It was almost uncomfortable because Skip would just cede the floor to Shannon. And let Shannon almost do a monologue, and he would agree with everything that he was saying, and, and show him extreme deference. So, I mean, like, but um, I, you know what? I'll go back to when Josh Ennis and Rich Lord were like really butting heads. And uh, for those of you outside of Houston or that don't listen to sports radio, it was a very, very successful show. Like, got ratings unlike anything 
people had ever seen in Houston. It was almost like it was almost like Northeast sports radio ratings get, which are like absurd up there how good they are. Like Josh and Rich almost had that, it, but like there got there came a point where it was just it wasn't working. And I always felt like they honestly should have brought in a marriage counselor. That's why I had the idea for going through all of those 12 rules, which these guys have violated so far. Um, but it gets to a point where like a sports radio station is kind of like a, a pro sports team in that it's a bunch of dudes who aren't always the best at talking about their feelings and everything and sorting things out. So they get to a point of no return. And, and I honestly feel like these guys probably, and maybe they tried it. I'm sure Fox sports spent a lot of resources to try to fix it, but sometimes it's a matter of like getting to the root of the issue. And I feel like these guys, um, they may have missed, they may have missed an opportunity to keep something special going on. I don't know. I don't know if it's special or not. Let's see. I had written some points down, but that notepad, that notepad's long gone. Um, I think the one thing about Shannon Sharp is that he's he's probably going to enjoy his podcast a lot more. I would encourage him not to worry about whether people uh, think he's taking up the mantle of this or the mantle of that as much. I, I do feel like he reads his mentions. The fact that he was getting into it at courtside at the Lakers game or some of the other times that things have boiled over that he's apologized for to where he doesn't realize sometimes that okay now he's in the media he's got a um he's got to back off a little bit there's he's going through some stuff but maybe it was just struggling with like his place in the world and where it is right now hey you made it all the way to the end of what was probably a pretty long video because i tend to go long really appreciate you hanging out with me and i would love if you would like and subscribe i do a whole lot of nfl content a whole lot of houston content i played 10 years in the nfl now i do a sports radio show in houston so a whole lot of all of that plus more interviews as we move along we'll be adding topics i just started doing youtube a few months ago and i'm absolutely loving it so thank you for the support